Okay, these bins I found in the trash about 15 years ago and I've been saving them for a project just like this one. I took about 30 of them out of the garbage and I've been using them for all different types of stuff in the shop. They're kind of like job bins and individual job parts go into those bins. I'm going to build a rack in an industrial stylized fashion and the drawers are going to, these bins are going to become the drawers of this rack. It's going to be done in sort of an industrial stylized look. This is plywood that I got from the lumberyard and to carry it because I walked away from the lumberyard with it. I had them cut it into strips of 16 inches and I just wanted to recut it to make sure that they did a good job because they usually don't. So I just passed it all through the same width of the fence. And whenever I measure anything, if I have the actual real thing, like these bins, I always make sure that I just lay them in place to make sure that my spatial layout is correct and there I am just double checking it with the ruler and using my cross cut saw there and I need five pieces because this is going to be four layers high and four drawers wide so when you have four individual layers you need a top and a bottom and then the pieces in between that and so what I'm doing now is I'm gonna make a special jig to put a dado a dado in the same exact spot on each one of the five layers of this cabinet. I call it a cabinet or a drawer system. I'm not quite sure exactly what to call it. So I'll probably call it four different things by the end of this video. And what I'm doing now is I'm just laying out a spacer and these are going to be the rail systems that I'm going to use with my router to cut a very specific dado. And I'm securing it. I glued them in place and I put screws. I nailed them just to get them in position. I'm happy with it. And now this is sort of my my system, I'm not sure if this is a system that anybody else has ever used, but I used it kind of alone by myself. I've never really seen anybody do it. Crazy glue a guide exactly the width of the router bit. It's about a hundred thousandths wider than the router bit, otherwise it would just continue to plane the inside of that jig. So have to really be sure that the router bit is not rubbing the inside of the guard there. And so you see how I use the, the router bit on that jig? to create a slot. I tested it to make sure that the piece of wood fits in there snugly. And there it is. Like I said, the one thing with a system like this is you got to be sure that the router bit is not cutting the inside of your jig. And one way that I make sure of that is I draw a marker line or a pencil line on the inside. And if that pencil line stays there, then I know that I'm safe. Otherwise, it's taking off a couple of hundred thousands at a time and I'm not realizing it. And by the time I get to the end of it, my my slot is much wider so if you do try this make sure you just put a pencil line inside of the those two gu guides there on the uh, on the, the table I actually did it at the very end of this so you don't see them here and what I have there is a router bit that is a half inch wide and I'm cutting a three quarter inch wide hole as long as there's enough room for the router to move left and then right and you see I move over and then I move over to the other side so I find that actual bits that are supposed to be three quarters to match the plywood never do. They're usually always wider. So by using this half inch bit and then just moving the router in and around the inside of the, the two pieces of wood that are actually three quarters of an inch apart, I get perfect results. And now I'm trying to decide how high I want to go when I pick a measurement of about five and a half inches. And on my drawing, I just count exactly how many I need. I probably could have done the math without even looking at it, but I'm a visual person. I need to see it. If I tried to do the math, I probably would have made 25 more than I needed. And there I am just cutting it up. And that, those cutoffs are all just the leftover parts from the original cuts. And so here, I'm using that piece on the table initially just to give me the, the layout or to hold those pieces while I glue them to now what's going to become the bottom tap it in place and I'm using two inch screws to make sure I get a good grab I'm gonna be able to screw most of this not all of it but you'll see the reasons why so now I turn that over and now that's basically gonna remain my bottom of course glue is always important no matter what it is you're making the glue actually probably holds stronger than the nails of the screws and so there I'm able to bury those screws inside of the dado and now I'm gonna glue some more up these steel weights that I always use everybody's always asking me where I get them I get them at a scrapyard 
they have all different types of cutoffs and stuff made out of steel and I use them for right angles I check them to make sure that they're right angles if I'm gonna use them in that capacity because sometimes they have bad cuts on them that old bolt is something I've had around for a long time and again I screw down where I can and I glue where I can I can't always put screws on both sides but I trust the glue and then the face frame in the back is also going to do a tremendous amount of this the work keeping all these pieces together and so I'm building my little uh, apartment house here and this moves along a lot faster than it really did in real life I made sure that the glue kind of tacked up before I moved on to the next stage and moved the the weights from level to level and that's the top level and it's nice to have that dado jig that I used earlier on because now every one of these vertical lines are nice and straight just to get a little feel for what I'm working on here I stick the bins in just to get a look and now I need to make my sides now I go to the closest joint where I know that that's going to be nice and accurate I wouldn't take those measurements off the edge of those pieces hanging in space and so now those are my two end pieces and I'm using the same jig that I used to cut the sides although it's not necessarily spaced accurately I'm going to move the wood underneath each one of the different slots as I need them so I do this twice so I'm just tapping the wood around and sliding it where I need to and of course everything needs to be screwed to the table because if you do that you're going to end up with a slot that comes off crooked putting my one end on screwing it in place and you can see how everything lines up nicely there it is and then I do the other side as well you can see that the dado provides a lot of strength of course but the other thing it provides is a nice straight clean build you could probably build this without putting dados in it but then you'd spend quite a bit of time trying to line things up and get them to stay straight with that jig and the ability to put those dados exactly on the opposite side of each one of those three center pieces makes this thing line up nice and pretty now what I'm doing is I'm putting a steel face edge banding on it and this is 1 8 inch thick, one -eighth inch thick steel by 3 quarters of an inch and I'm hand cutting it just because I'm there and it's easier I could move it away from the unit every single time I want to make a cut but that would be kind of difficult now for my short pieces I bring my bandsaw right to the table and then because everything was done in an accurate fashion all the cuts are basically the same size so it makes it easy because I'm just using one piece to mimic the other piece and now I tack weld it all together you gotta tack weld it in place that's really important and now I actually weld it the tack weld I didn't want to get too crazy with the welds because then the wood would burn and then I grind all my welds flat I use typically a 3M Cubetron flap disc and they last for a very long time they're a little expensive but it's worth it and now I drill holes and again I'm going for an industrial stylized look and I'm going to use brass screws that I bought at McMaster Car number 10 round headed screws with a slot and that's just to kind of make it look a little bit period piece I'm drilling it in place I actually used a piece of wood which off camera I did I marked all my holes so that they would be even and evenly placed and now this is a blackener I'm blackening the grind spots or the ground spots just so everything sort of becomes one tone of black and now I flipped it over I'm doing the back and I'll cut the back out of two pieces of scrap wood so I make sure that I line my seam up over one of the verticals so you don't see it from inside not that it's that important as I said before this is going to be a shop piece and I screw it the reason I wanted to put a half inch back on it is because if those bins were filled with heavy pieces say like doorknobs or bolts and nuts or whatever if I slide them in there I wanted to be able to hit the back and not continuously work on banging the back out so that's why I put a lot of screws and that's why I used half inch I just stained it with the light stain and now I'm ready to put the front on 
And since I pre-drilled all those holes through the steel, I'm just using a thin drill bit to pre-drill the end of the plywood. And now here I am screwing my screws in. Took about, I think, 90 screws. I forget, but I picked up two boxes from McMaster Car. Altogether, they were about $15 for those gold screws. Gold in color, but made in brass, solid brass. And solid brass screws are very soft, so it's hard to use them in hardwoods, but it works well in this case. And now here I am. My bin storage device is basically finished. I'm doing a little silly animation there with my logo jumping around, and we are done. I really like the edge banding in steel. It really works well with these rusty old shop bins. Now i got a nice storage unit. Thank you.